VIPservices.co.uk Sponsors of Cage Fighter Welcome to Cage Fire. This is mixed martial arts at its very best. But I'm not alone. I've got my bus driving mate with me, old Granite Grant Warman. And Granite, how have you been, my friend? I've been very well, you know, as usual, training, you know, <laughs> ducking and diving, Dave. But uh, I brought someone along today who uh, people who've been watching this programme will have seen before. Uh, he's a little ball of energy. He's a fighter. He trains people. He films. He's living MMA. He's living the dream. It's Mark Wartime Carly. Oh, Thank Mark, you welcome on the couch, my friend. Now, last I wouldn't recognise him because last time he sat there, I think he was 86 kilos yeah. of, of big blubber. But I mean, how has it changed your life the way you've cut down in weight alone? I tell you what, I used to be fat. I used to drink. I used to smoke. I used to be horrible, lazy. <laughs> now, tons of energy. I love looking in the mirror. I like buying 28 inch waist clothing. You know, I feel good about myself. And it's all down to one thing MMA. Yeah, do you know what? It, it's true. Positive people deserve positive energy and draws a new person out of your life. Yeah, you're you know? right. You know, there's a saying that you are the average of your peers or you're the average of the people you surround yourself with. Yeah. And I think it's what you said, you know, if. If you're mixing with people who drink, smoke, and eat burgers every day, you just do more. You eat, drink, smoke, and eat burgers every day. You're you're mixing with people now who are professional athletes uh, and are just surrounded with positive energy. Every day, I'm not joking. I get up. I can't wait to do what I'm going to do that day. I've got. I'll be filming. I'll be training. I'll be writing, and I'm just like, yes, I can't wait, <laughs> and I love it. You know, like I phone you up, Dave. Like Dave, I've got an idea. He don't stop phoning me up with ideas. He drives me. He drives me mad. Yeah. Yeah. You, your wartime company that's coming on really well now. Yeah, the wartime brand itself. I mean, we've got a track out on iTunes. You can see of Coalition Fight Music. Obviously, I'm doing out and about trying to find stuff for you. The best gyms all over the place. Yeah, and if you want gyms, use CMMA.com for your gym of the week. We're going to miss out gym of the week, week, week this week because he's here. He can't be everywhere, yeah. can you? Yeah, they, oh, they, you can't send me everywhere, can you? <laughs> I mean, talk about um, throwing yourself into everything. I mean, the wartime brand's doing well, but you've even had a tattoo. Uh, we'll, have a look, <laughs> we'll have a look at his tattoo later on. I don't agree with that yeah. tattoo. But listen, you go a bit OTT sometimes. Chill out, take it easy. In fact, chill out and watch this lovely, lovely fight. This is Wartime Carlin versus Jason Badass Barrett. My name's Mark Carlin. I'm 30 years old. I'm up from Brighton. And tonight, you're going to see fireworks. Jason Badass Barrett, a.k.a. the Broccoli Bomber, a.k.a. the South London Strangler, training out of my front room, to be honest. <laughs> training out of my sofa in the front room, playing PlayStation, getting ready. 12 weeks ago, I was nothing but a fat journalist with intensive training, non-stop getting banged in the head. Now, I've turned into a cage fighter. And tonight, you're going to see my debut at Ultimate Challenge. This, you want to remember. Barrett stepping side, stepping out of the way of them. Both guys for a flurry of shots. Barrett, I think, was caught a little bit surprised there. Good left hook by Jason Barrett, lands it twice. Both guys just steaming. Punches being thrown. Barrett finding home. Oh, yes. Barrett is treating him with disdain, which he needs to do, Rob. He needs to finish this early to prove a point. That's, that's the only way he gets his credibility here. And that's the way he's treating this. Hats off to Carlin, he made his way back to his feet. Guys, regardless of whether Carlin wins or loses, he's showing tremendous heart here tonight. And the entertainment value of this fight, you know, is incredible. There's a lot of punches there to the back of Jason Barrett's head. Now, I'm not sure, but, oh, very hard knee. Carlin looking, looking like he's gassing already. I can see some blood just on the inside of the mouth. And did you see the chest pump with the jab? He's definitely been on New Jersey Shore because he did the chest pump and he threw the shot. <laughs> and again, guys, Carlin, and he's calling it on. This guy's really got some guts. Hey, he's definitely an entertainer, without a doubt, regardless of whether he wins or loses. Now, Barrett is showing why he's the better fighter. 
That's what I agree, Pierre. He's, there's a nonchalance about him in there at the moment that is dismantling Carly. And that's what it needs to be, this, this sort of thing. It has to be an emphatic win to make this a win situation for him. But nice straight left from Barrett. Barrett has to be careful that he doesn't get so nonchalant that he gets caught with something stupid. Barrett is showing no respect to Carling. Hands down by the waist. He's blocking with his hands, which we know uh, with any other fighter, he can have the hands up, blocking with the elbows. Oh, beautiful kick. Beautiful work by Barrett as he slips to the ground. But Carling unable to capitalize. Another shocking punch from Barrett lands. Again, another left, another right. Carling is out on his feet. And he lands on the mat with Jason Barrett's hands lifted in victory. And can I just say, I'm glad the reputation of MMA is here to stay. This was the only way Jason Barrett could win. With a nonchalant display, absolutely showing no respect. This is the only way it was a win situation with Jason Barrett. And he did it, Pierre, emphatically. Okay, guys, I'm just gonna wrap this up in a nutshell. It was pretty much Jason Barrett all through the round with whatever he wanted. And that shows big that head height kick. kick. That was beautiful. But again, let's, I, I didn't expect it to end anyway, but this way, big hooks, big punches, nonchalant, over the top, square on the button, down goes Carlin. But guys, Carlin brought and put his heart and soul into this bout. And a round of applause. And uh, you know what? I think he represented himself very well here tonight. That head kick, I've got to say, guys, that was beautiful. And hats off to Carlin. He took that very, very well. Well, we've turned it from a no-win situation for Jason Barrett to a win situation through the sheer style of his victory. Simple as that. As you said, Pierre, landed with what he wanted, when he wanted, and dismantled his man coldly, cruelly, and clinically. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes and 18 seconds of the very first round, your winner by knockout from the blue corner, Jason Badass Barrett. Kabosh! Maybe that could be knockout of the week or fight of the week. Well, it was, it was a vicious knockout, um, but for a first fight, Mark, <laughs> you stepped up and fought someone who was just experience wise was yards ahead of you. Do you know what? Yeah. It was a TV show, it was unfit to fight. I love a challenge. I have never backed down from a challenge in my life. Well, we got a few challenges for him later on. <laughs> Offset, don't you worry, people. But I mean, that kick, when it hit you, did that like the cobwebs must went, hello, a wicked. From that point onwards, I didn't know anything that was going on. I, I literally didn't... woke up two days later to say fear looking after me. All right. Ruined. <laughs> You've always got to have yeah. a good wife looking after you, a good I, mother going I, mean, I can remember saying, um, in all fairness, I've never rated Jason Barrett that highly, but I, I can remember saying when I originally heard that you were going to fight that you were on a suicide mission. But in all fairness, um, you went into that fight, and I think it was the mental side of it that, uh, that stopped you performing as you should have done. Um, but blind, what a performance. What a performance. Because every first punch fight. you threw was there to knock his head off. Yeah. And even Jason said, I was blowing off that. Because he, he was coming after me like his little dynamite. Yeah. Oh, he was twice the size of you as well. So. But listen, yeah. I took the fight. I begged Dave. I, I want to make this clear to everyone. I absolutely begged you. I was like, come on, let me you do it. You want to fight Jack Mason? I mean, how sad, how crazy are you? Well, how crazy. <laughs> I, want, I want to fight Randy Couture. But <laughs> it's, it's not, not going to happen. happen. Okay, yeah. people. Let us move on swiftly yeah. to Submission of the Week. And this is one of Mark Carlin's good friends. This is Nick Chapman versus David Zedolowski. But working all the time from his back is Zedolowski. Chapman working again for that arm triangle. His head is down on the floor. He's trying to lift Zedolowski's arm up. Plenty of time left in the round as well. Doing a very good job defensively, Zedolowski at the moment. Chapman trying to find a position as this I said is that where Chapman to needs to be. Moves to the arm triangle. Could be dangerous time for Zetlovsky. Zetlovsky once again is in the, he's got him in a half guard. He needs to get out of that half guard to put it on tight. Excuse me, Ian, I didn't actually see that. I think he's got his legs right the way across, but you're right, the half guard is on tight. But Zetlovsky's he's tapped, he's, he's, tapped. Tapped. he's out and he doesn't like it. Chapman. 
wins by arm triangle and you can see the frustration on Zetanovsky's face as he strikes the canvas. A very, very good win for Chapman. This yeah. is the arm triangle, this is where it's in tight, the referee's looking, he's holding the arm to see if Zetanovsky has passed out. Very nice comeback, he was looking tired, he was getting just slightly beaten on the ground by Zetanovsky. But pulling off another great arm triangle there. Arm triangles are us, kabush. Unbelievable. Well, when, you, when you're getting a, when a man as big and powerful as, as Chapman sort of wraps his arms around your, around your neck, um, there's no way out really, well, is he's it? talking about the different ways to do arm tri triangles. And it's not, as you said before, it's not how many s submissions you know, it's how to do one submission properly. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's phenomenal. I've seen you train when we went down to Bandog to do Gym of the Week, and some of the secrets that you've got in your toolbox are unbelievable. Out of my little book, oh, I don't have a little secret. And he's an old man. <laughs> you're the most <laughs> agile geezer I have ever seen. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'll pay yeah. you later. In fact, I'll get him back in a break. We'll see you in three minutes' time. See, see that? See, this was, the, this was the old. You grab their wrist, you pull it there, and if you look at them, there's no defence. You keep that nice and postured and then deliver the blows. Oh, my... Uh, no, Grant. No, no. Anyway, oh, my... I mean, it is funny. The stuff you learn at the gyms, at the guys you meet, and sometimes everybody opens up a new box of tricks and you go, oh, my God. Do you know what? I've learned so much stuff nowadays. I'm starting to pick up tricks and tips that you just couldn't even imagine. And they come from everybody. I'll hit a gym and all of a sudden I'll learn a new little hold, a small manipulation, and you think, wow, it changes it. Yeah. And it's well, unbelievable. Well, you know, I think that's the, uh, the great thing about um, MMA compared to any other uh, combat sport is even now it's still evolving. It's still progressing. There's still unexplored avenues. Well, do you know, know we was in... Uh Corichiba, where Anderson Silver trains, the shootbox guys, uh, Shogun, Gene Silver, all the, bit, all the yeah. big guys there. And what he used to do all day long is just work new moves out on the floor. They go, hey, yeah. you know, but and you see this new move that yeah. they've just made up. And anybody sit there go, no, and they practice it, and there you go, a new shootbox move. Yeah. So then Brazilians, mate, they are just leaps and bounds. But that's yeah. what's happening in Britain now, which is great. Yeah, yeah, the young kids have got this imagination. They're into it. They all understand the technicalities. Uh, and they're coming up with new... You, you get, it's not so much new moves, but a variation of an old move. Old moves that people have forgotten about coming back out the bag. And it's really it's funny how kids... Yeah. I mean, I taught kids' class with MMA. All you people out there, kids love this sport. And when you take, they put their hand up and go, but you could do this. And you think, I can't believe how that kid is thinking already. Like, yeah. if you try and do it, no. But, sir, you could do this. You think, yeah. the kids are even thinking about it. Do you know what? You see the kids' MMA classes as well, and they're unbelievable. You're talking about 16-year-old kids, and you're thinking... I really wouldn't want to step into the cage with you now. <laughs> they're big, they're strong. There's, there's kids doing strength and conditioning down at ZT, and it's unbelievable. They're 13, 14 years old doing that. And you think, wow, I mean, you're just prepping yourself for What are these career. guys going to be like when they're 18? Scary. Oh, scary dudes. <laughs> OK, a guy, I mean, you've worked for UCMMA now, Anthony Lyles, a runner. We set this fight up. It was even Stevens all the way. You both had bad blood, but, I mean, at the end of it, you were shaking at the after party, etc. Don't tell people what happened. Let us have a look at this phenomenal, phenomenal fight. This is Anthony Lills versus Mark Wartime Carling. My name's Mark Wartime Carling. You might remember me from Unfit to Fight as the journalist who got in the cage, but this time I'm back as a fighter, and tonight, fighting Anthony. Let's let the magic unfold. My name's Anthony Lowes, fighting out of South London, fighting out of a diesel gym. I've been training out for three months, Mark, just for you. I heard you've done your unfit to fight, I weren't impressed. I'm fighting out of ZT Fight School Brighton. Those guys have driven me through absolute hell. All for tonight. Also, I can smash the living <laughs> out of Anthony. The blood is everywhere. <laughs> Neil's trying to scoot himself out from underneath, but both guys seem to be at a bit of a stalemate at the moment. Referee Grant Walterman looking in. If there's not action, he will stand them back up. But Colin needs to cross-face Nils. He needs to cross-face with his right hand to create a bit of space. Once he's created that space, then he's going to be careful. He's going to get turned over. The cage may stop him, but there we have it. Good you call, could, Ian. Good you call. could see it. You could see it. His balance was way off. That's right. Nils set it up and did well to execute it. Nice knees to the body. For a debut fight, Lils was really impressing me. He didn't panic when he got taken down. We talk about he looks more comfortable on his feet, but he was relaxed on the bottom and took his time.
found that sweep and now he's in a good position. He obviously knows his ground game, he's obviously done a big ground in the past, so we can see that. Half guard position once again, Leo's maybe looking to pull that leg out, it is a good tight half guard. And Carlin's also got control of both the arms. It's kind of frustrating when you're the fighter on top and the, the guy on the bottom is hanging on like that. But what else can Carlin do? Because if he doesn't hang on like that, he is going to eat some leather. Good call, Black Grant. All a man to get both fighters up, right? Just 90 seconds left in this one. Both fighters come to the center. Another nice chopping leg kick. Carlin with quite a yeah. rangy low kick that didn't find a home. Trying to chop away, but again, Nils good with good knee. Looks for the takedown, wins it comfortably. Nils wants to be careful, nearly caught in a guillotine there. I thought Nils would have wanted to keep the distance so he could do some striking, but he's obviously comfortable on the ground. Whether he can see that call in is tired, whether he can feel that his strength is not there from the opening seconds. What I like from Lille's here is he's moving the fight into his own corner, so all his own cornermen can shout him advice, can shut down the game of his opponent. Nice body shots. Just wearing down his opponent with these shots. The body shots may not finish a fight, but it will pay dividends by the end of the round. It will tire out his opponent. And we can see from our position the leg of Colin there, some real welts on the thigh. It's clear those leg kicks have taken a toll. And as the fight goes on, those leg kicks are going to take more and more of a toll, slowing the man down. And Colin is hanging on. He's doing well to hang on to stop the punishment coming down, but his arms will get pumped. How much more can he hang on like this? 30 seconds, 20 seconds left now. He will hang on till the end of the round, but that will be to his disadvantage come the second round. His arms will be full of lactic acid. That's right, into the last few seconds. Anthony Lyles, for me, has totally dominated this round. Mark Carlin feeling under the pressure as we go into the second. Well, definitely, definitely around for Anthony Lyles, definitely. And it's Lyles with a beautiful jab back, Carlin up there. And from that point, it was Carlin who was able to get the takedown. We can see Lyles may be struggling position a little bit. A good slam by, uh, by Carlin, but he didn't really make the most of this position for me, Ian. It was a fantastic takedown. That was a high crotch pickup, slammed his man down to the ground. He just didn't know how to capitalize on the side control, which made Lyles actually take him down. And those leg kicks, look, you can see the wince on Carlin's face there when he got jabbed and pushed back to the cage. This for me was a mistake by Carlin, he's all out of shape, all out of balance and Lyles does a great job, he just turns his man and he's able to take the dominant position the again. The simplest of techniques we can see there gentlemen, often the most effective. It's the simple techniques that work, you don't need to do anything crazy, we don't need to see the, the Eddie Bravo twist or anything like that. Oh, the, called it. The referee has called a stop to this contest, he had a few words with Carlin whether he is injured or whether he is tired. I think I did hear Carlin say to the referee he's feeling slightly lightheaded, so it could just be the exertion from the first round. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have to win her after one round of mixed martial arts fighting due to doctor stoppage. Declaring your winner, Anthony Lyles! And your runner-up, Mark Wharton Carlin! Anthony. What's actually happened, ladies and gentlemen, is Mark's actually had his nose broken and too much blood is actually flowing into the back of his throat, so he couldn't continue in the fight. What a war. Again, it seems any time you step in the cage, there's going to be fireworks. I mean, some lovely yeah. slams, some lovely takedowns. You can see the difference in him straight away. Oh, there's a, a huge improvement just from the first fight to this fight. Uh, the weight suited you a bit better, but you had you cut a lot of weight for this one. I cut, listen, I cut drastically. I was cutting from January 1st, and I still had four kilos to lose, and I've got a great dietitian. He can get me to whatever weight I need to be at. Oh, can I have his number? <laughs> <laughs> but he gets me there, but the problem is, he even said to me, then how well are you going to do it that yeah, way? it's rehydrating, isn't it? I think now you've found your home, 70 kilos has got to be the weight you fight at. Oh, 100%. 66 I mean, was too much, wasn't it? Do you know what? You see people that walk around two or three kilos heavier, and I'll be interviewing and talking to them, and they're saying to me, yeah, I feel good. You see the ones like Michael Pastu cut so much, he's in phenomenal shape. But sometimes I think you see him near the end of the round. I mean, yeah. he, he's they're, just double hard. They're, they're always the ones who, who run out of energy. But their tanks don't seem to gradually run out. They're, they're, they're running along and then boom, 
Yeah, they just dip yeah. and go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny, at the end of that fight with Michael, his arms did seem low down. It looked like his gas hadn't run out on the first round. But we, you, you never know, do you? Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. talk about his fight. I mean, the, the blood was going back, because people are like, why didn't you come out? The blood was going back into your nose. And you couldn't breathe. Oh, there's claret everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, you know, I because I refereed the fight, um, you weren't right. There was... Uh, the, the blood that was going into your throat was causing your uh, trouble breathing and you were suffering severely from oxygen debt. You were going dizzy. Uh, if, you know, I asked you, did you want to carry on? But I think I would have probably called it anyway. Oh, Joe, you know um, what? The second you called it, I just dropped. <laughs> um, <laughs> I went, oh, God, yeah, you thank right. God it's all over. Yeah. Good boys. And sometimes you need a guy, a ref to go, mate, it's all, it's all over. Because sometimes you go, no, I'll go out there. And that's when injuries can happen. And we do not like injuries in this sport. But that brings on nicely to a guy who's made your fight music, who's done a lot of stuff for you. I think let's have a look at CJ interviewing the Coalition guys. Hi, I'm CJ and this is an exclusive interview for Cage Fighter. So guys, would you like to tell us who you are and what it is you do? We're a Coalition fight music, uh, kings of fight music. We make fight music for the fighters, sponsor fighters and stuff like that. We love in uh, UCMMA. Great, that's wicked. So, who, you know, what fighters have you done music for? Uh, Nick the Headhunter Chapman and uh, Mark Wartime Carling. Wartime. Wartime TV, baby. Harry the Hitman's coming up next. Oh, that's wicked. So, you know, have you always had a, an interest in the sport? Yeah, yeah. We've, we've, always, we've always been very passionate about music and fighting, and there's a lot of parallels, and uh, yeah, we're just very excited to be part of this scene. What is it about tonight that's feeling so good? Oh, it's real good. Everyone's coming out striking real hard. Everyone's giving it their all, and that's what we love. Just getting out there and just throwing those hands, baby. Good job. Great, don't we? We all love that. Thank you, guys. Thank you. What a nice bunch of guys. And you know what? They absolutely adore UCMMA. They adore the English scene, you know what I mean? Unbelievable. Yeah, they mentioned uh, when we saw them at UCMMA, they were, just, they were so excited because they were in the UK. UKMMA is just bubbling, isn't it? You know, And you go to a live event. I don't think they've, you know, in America, there's MMA everywhere, but you just don't get the atmosphere that you get at a UK MMA event. No, well, they was, they was on the couch a couple of weeks ago and you could see the enthusiasm with them. They yeah. were like, we love it here, man, you know. I mean, them guys just, they eat, breathe MMA just like you. Do you know what I mean? Exactly the same. They don't want to go. They want to stay in the UK. I was with them. They said to me, Mark, we want to stay. Try and find us somewhere onto Zara, at Halo. You know, just saying, keep us here. Keep they us here love forever. it. I think I've got a room to let, actually. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, enough yeah. about your rooms let. Mark yeah. Carlin, it's been an absolute pleasure. We'll see you fighting again soon, I do hope. Fantastic. Grant Waterman, always a pleasure yeah. to have you here. And yeah. from me, Dave O'Donnell, we'll see you next time on Cage Fighter. VIPServices.co.uk Sponsors of Cage Fighter